Hello, and welcome to our update on the FASB's Disclosure Framework Project. In recent years, there have been growing concerns about whether the required disclosures in the financial statement are meeting the needs of users and whether they have become too burdensome for preparers. Some of the concerns include, are the required disclosures providing relevant information? Are the costs to prepare those disclosures excessive compared to the benefits to the users? And is the information getting lost within all the details within the notes of the financial statements? As a result, the FASB undertook the Disclosure Framework Project. In addition to those concerns, there is belief that disclosures have built up over time and the board recognizes that there currently is not a mechanism in place for it to reconsider the disclosure requirements over time. In addition, there is not a process in place for the board to ensure consistency in disclosure requirements from topic to topic, and it has been noted that more recent topics tend to have more disclosure requirements compared to older topics. To effectively address these concerns and develop requirements in a consistent manner across all standards, the FASB has recognized that some kind of disclosure framework is needed. My name is Arturo Spencer, and I'm a senior manager in KPMG's Department of Professional Practice. And I'm happy to be joined here today with Sean Stoker, who is a partner in KPMG's Department of Professional Practice. Sean is also a member of the team that is actively following this project. So, Sean, since you've been following this project, why don't you provide us with a little bit of background on this project to help us understand why there is a need for a framework? Sure. You know, the, the need for a disclosure framework has really never been uh, more apparent than it is today as preparers and users of financial statements continue to voice concerns both about the effectiveness of current disclosure and the volume of the current disclosure. Uh, re reporting entities often feel burdened by the level of disclosure, and they found it difficult to really strike the balance between a compliance mindset and an effectiveness mindset when they're developing the disclosures. So while users are able to utilize technology to sort of sift through the volume of disclosure, they continue to voice concern that the disclosure day is simply not as effective as it could be. So the FASB and the ISB began a joint project on a conceptual framework back in 2004, and the development of a disclosure framework was included in that initial joint effort. The FASB and the ISB ultimately issued two chapters of the conceptual framework as part of that joint initiative, but they later announced in 2010 that the joint project would be delayed as they needed to focus their efforts on the joint convergence projects that were ongoing, like the leases, revenue, and impairment projects. And so this sort of was put on the back burner at that time. Well, subsequently, the FASB decided to add the Disclosure Framework project back to their technical agenda on their own. And, and they ultimately issued an exposure draft in 2014 without the ISB. So this is no longer a joint effort, uh, but something that the FASB and, and the ISB are working on separately. The ISB does still have a similar initiative ongoing with respect to disclosure, but again, separate from the FASB's uh, current initiative. Well, Sean, this seems like quite an undertaking. What is the overall objective um, that the FASB is trying to achieve with this framework? Well, I think the FASB's real objective here is, is to develop a framework that will allow for an improvement in the effectiveness of disclosure. So we're talking about existing disclosure as well as disclosure requirements that will be developed in the future as the FASB does th their normal standard setting activities. And so the, the use of a framework that they will develop is really expected to drive consistency from the current board and with future boards. So if we think about, uh, we think about that, if, if a board is, is following a framework today um, and, and, and there's future boards come along and follow the same framework, hopefully we have consistency where today uh, a board today may make different decisions than a board uh, 10 years from now because there's just not that process or consistency in the process. So th that's really the, the stated objective. And, and while it's not a stated objective to limit or reduce the volume of disclosure, it's, it's a desired outcome from all involved. So we'll see if that, that comes to fruition as we go through this. And I just want to point out that the scope of the project is limited to the notes of the financials. It does not extend to information presented outside of the financial statements such as MD&A. But the FASB has indicated throughout the process that they'll, they're, they're committed to working with the SEC to coordinate disclosure requirement efforts in a manner that, that really makes sure that the information is not duplicative. Um, but again, we'll have to wait and see how that, how that turns out as well. So that was helpful. Uh, and you've talked about the framework a bit. So how is this expected to work? Well, the, the framework is really based upon an assumption that the information in the notes to the financial statements is going to be relevant to users. 
and it's meant to assist users in their assessment of an entity's cash flows. So to that end, the exposure draft that was issued noted that the notes should contain information about financial statement line items, and that's in cases where the financial statement line item in and of itself is not descriptive enough to t sort of tell the user the story. So in those cases, the notes would be used to, to tell the story for, for those financial statement line items. The note should also contain information about the reporting entity, and there should be sufficient information within the notes to provide a user with information about past as well as current events or circumstances that have not met the criteria for recognition, but they could impact future cash flows of the entity. So those are really uh, sort of the three backdrops here. And if we step back, all of this is predicated on an assumption that users have an understanding of the general business risk, economic conditions, and also generally accepted accounting principles. So with that sort of as a background, the framework is built in the form of decision questions that the board will use to determine the type and volume of a disclosure for a particular standard. The questions are really grouped into two categories. First, there are questions that are focused on the information about line items that I mentioned before. And second, there are questions about the information around uh, you know, past events or current conditions that could affect cash flows that I talked about previously as well. So there's a total of 19 of these questions, 16 of which are about the line items and the other three about the past events or current conditions. And the questions are really posed as yes, no questions. However, the framework is not meant to be if the board answers a question yes, that there's a disclosure required, and if they answer a question no, that there's not a disclosure required. It's really just meant as a framework to, to give the board guidance and consistency when they're developing disclosures. So if they ask their, themselves the same questions each time they're developing disclosure, hopefully it'll drive some consistency. But, but again, it's not just a simple yes or no impacts whether or not we have disclosure. The FASBs also noted in, in the exposure draft that they, they are considering certain inherent limitations of the notes to the financial statements when they develop disclosure. So this includes things like cost-benefit analysis that, that may impact a requirement uh, is the information that's subject to disclosure really relevant to users uh, across an industry or, or very broadly? And is there a requirement to disclose future-oriented information potentially going to have a negative impact on an entity's cash flow? So those are the things that the, the FASB will think about as they go through and develop disclosures as part of the framework. Are there any other things that we should know about this project? I mean, maybe, you know, what are some of the recent developments as it relates to this project? Sure, let me take you through a couple of other considerations and then I'll tell you about the recent developments. Uh, just a couple of other things to mention. The FASB is in the process of evaluating current disclosure requirements for four different uh, existing standards. That's fair value measurement, defined benefit plans, inventory, and income taxes. And they're doing that using this pro proposed framework. They have not made any formal decisions as, as part of that project, but they have noted that as they've gone through this exercise, they have come across situations where there's likely disclosure that can or should be eliminated from existing disclosure requirements, and there are potentially new disclosures that may be warranted as a result of these reviews. And each of these reviews is listed separately on the FASB's technical agenda. I did also want to note that uh, the board is considering inter interim disclosure as a part of this project, and the current view is that the premise for, for interim periods is that it's not a discrete reporting period, but rather an integral part of the annual financial reporting period. So any consideration around disclosure should be built on that premise in the FASB's mind. And then finally, the, the board is considering a separate project that's, that's meant to address a framework of sorts for entities as they prepare their notes to the financial statements. And this is really intended to encourage the use of discretion by entities when they prepare the notes. So uh, stay tuned for that as well. In terms of recent developments, there's a couple things that have happened. The board began re-deliberations of the project after they received comment letters from the exposure draft. And one of the first tentative decisions that they've made is to change the current description of materiality that's in the conceptual framework. Many of the respondents to the exposure draft indicated that the board uh, should perhaps provide more guidance and clarity around materiality as it relates to disclosure. And so the board has decided to align the description that's currently in the framework with a Supreme Court decision that was made back in 1976 uh, that, that gives the definition of materiality from a Supreme Court perspective. So the FASB is going to align their description, but they'll also maintain language in the concept statement that really describes that materiality is an ent entity-specific judgment, and it'll also indicate that materiality is a legal determination. So 
While the alignment with the Supreme Court decision could likely introduce a lot of questions from preparers unless the FASB provides additional guidance uh, as, they, as they move forward. So again, that's another thing to stay tuned for, but that's one of the more recent developments. And then finally, the board held a, a forum on financial disclosure in December of 2014 that included a panel of users, preparers, auditors, and the standard setters. There was really not any new perspective that came out of, of the forum. However, it was noted that users continue to indicate that they don't believe that the level of disclosure should be reduced, but rather it needs to be more effective disclosures, while preparers indicated that it would be helpful if the FASB could provide some more structure around disclosure, and that might help alleviate some of the pressure that leads to a compliance mindset or sort of a check-the-box mindset, and that would ultimately lead to more effective disclosure. Finally, as part of the forum, it was noted when the discussion turned to materiality that the FASB should really consider defining materiality for its purpose, and then that can be interpreted from a legal perspective when it's needed, uh, but not necessarily starting having a starting point where materiality is a legal determination. Th those are really the recent developments uh, with respect to the project. Thanks for that update, Sean. And with that, both Sean and I would like to thank you for joining us today. We hope that the information provided gives you some insight into the Disclosure Framework Project. We would also like to inform you that you can find additional information on this project through our Defining Issues publication which is on the Financial Reporting Network website. On this website, you can also find additional podcasts and thought leadership publications on a host of other accounting and financial reporting topics.